which is a conducting box. It's closed. The cup that you see open is just to allow you to look inside, but it is closed from all sides. And there are some negative charges here, and there are positive charges in the foreground which you don't see. The red field lines come from positive charges, end up on the box, and the negative field lines go from the box to the negative charges. There is clear polarization. The box itself is neutral. I started with a neutral box. But because of this electric field, I get polarization. I end up with negative charge on the box here, only on the outside, positive charge on the box here, only on the outside. Inside, electric field is zero. No charge anywhere inside. Due to this crazy electric field, the free moving charges in the conductor will rearrange themselves in such a way that the electric field is zero everywhere in the conductor, is zero inside the cavity, and that the closed loop integral of E dot PL is zero everywhere if these are static fields. And it is clearly impossible for us to ever calculate how that charge configuration at the surface will have to be in order to meet all those conditions. But nature can do this effortlessly. And it can do it extremely fast, obeying all the laws of physics. It puts very quickly plus charge here and minus charge there. Make sure that there is no charge on the inside of the surface. It makes sure that the electric field is everywhere zero inside and in the box. And it also makes sure that the integral E dot L is zero everywhere in space. And therefore, the box and everything inside becomes an equipotential. So it also arranges matters so that the field lines, wherever they intersect with the box, are always perpendicular to the box. And all of that is done in almost no time at all by nature. It is an amazing thing that this happens and something that, as I said, would be impossible for us to calculate because the field configurations are extraordinarily difficult. So if you are inside this metal box, no matter what happens on the outside, you would be electrically isolated from the outside world. You would not notice that there is a strong electric field outside, nor would you notice that people are trying to charge up your house. We call that electrostatic shielding, and we give that a name that house of yours would be called a Faraday cage. It's called after the great physicist Faraday. You will learn a lot more about him during this course. Before I demonstrate this, I want to address an issue which is related to problem 2-1, which is your next assignment. And I want to urge you, I make myself no illusion, but I want to urge you to start working on that assignment this weekend, not next week. These assignments are not just baby assignments. These are MIT assignments, and you've got to put in a lot of work to do them. So please start this weekend not to do me a favor, but to do yourself that favor. But let's talk about problem 2-1. In other words, I will help you with that problem 2-1. I said several times that it is not possible to get an electric field inside a hollow conductor. Well, suppose I go inside the conductor. I go inside there. And I put sneakily a charge in my pocket. And I sit inside there, and you close it. Then there is a charge inside. There's nothing you can do about it. And if there's a charge inside, there's an electric field. So now we have a situation, and since it is post Valentine's Day, my heart has evolved into a sphere again. So now we take a spherical conductor, solid, this is solid <laughs> material, and somehow I'm sitting inside here with a charge plus Q. You can make it minus if you want to. That's exactly what problem 2-1 is about. And now clearly, there is positive charge inside, so clearly there has to be an electric field. But the electric field inside the conductor, that means the electric field anywhere here, must be zero. If it's not zero, the electrons will keep moving until it is zero. 
So the conducting material itself has no electric fields. What does that mean now with respect to any charge on the inside surface? Now there must be charge on the inside surface. Because now, if I make this my Gaussian surface, which is now a spherical surface, a closed surface, Mr. Gauss says that the closed surface integral of E dot dA over this surface must be zero because the electric field is zero anywhere. That's the same as all the charge inside divided by epsilon zero. So the, the charge inside must be zero. Since there can be no charge in the conductor itself, negative charge must now accumulate on the inside of that surface. So that the net charge inside this surface is zero. So now we do get charge on the inside. And how much charge do you get on the inside? Exactly minus Q so that the sum of the two is zero. Now this conductor originally was neutral. It had no net charge. So therefore, on the surface of the conductor, we must now see charge plus Q. Because the minus charge on the inside came from the conductor itself, and so the sum must be zero. So now you get a peculiar situation that the plus Q charge inside which creates an E-field inside, creates negative charge on the inside, the same in magnitude, opposite in sign, and plus Q charge on the outside. And the electric fields, they are very complicated. The electric fields, let me try to put them in. Uh, I would imagine that if this charge Q is closer to this wall than to this wall, that the negative charge here will be larger in density than there really an induction effect. The negative charge wants to go to this plus. That's really what's happening. And so since this charge is closer to this wall than to that wall, it will be able to attract more electrons. And so it's clear that the density of charge here should be higher than there. And so the field lines, always perpendicular to the equipotential, so they must be always perpendicular to the wall, sort of like this. So I put in a few field lines. But here, the field will be stronger than there. So there is a field inside. What now is the charge distribution on the outside? That is the hardest of all, and by no means so obvious. It turns out that the charge on the outside, on this sphere, because it is a sphere, will be uniformly distributed. And it is not intuitive, and it is not obvious. Nature must obey all laws of physics. The conductor must become an equipotential. There can be no electric field inside the conductor. Electric field